Okay, so I'm going to talk about localizing your apps. The main topic of this is using good old faithful NS localized string. Can I get a hand for who has used it? That's not bad. Who's really used it? Who's used it and then localized the app after using it? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm here, because it frustrates me to all ends when I see that people don't use it properly. So this talk came from a Twitter conversation with Nick Forge a couple of weeks ago. I think it was nine days ago based on that tweet. I'd been brewing for a while about a sort of method to make using an S-localized string better mainly because I wanted to do something it couldn't do, but then Nick says this, and I know, what Nick, I know who Nick works for and what he does, and I know he's got lots of apps and he's going into different languages and different things. I'm like, okay, this is a common problem. I'm gonna do a talk about it. And it was the week before Koga Heads and Sean was sitting next to me. So I'm like, all right. And no one, was, no one had put their hand up to talk, so now I'm here. There's three stages of localization of an app, and this is really basic, but you've got initial development when the app's fresh, when there's no code and there's no language, there's no nothing. This is where you write your NS localized strings. This is the pain point that will kill you later on. The second one is initial localization. Based on the hands, not many people have done that. That's when you take your output, your strings files, your crappy diagrams of your app to someone who speaks another language. This one, the third one is where I'm at at the moment, which is where I've got an app that is localized, but I'm changing it. And I kind of, I know that what I'm changing is changing the context of what I have localized. And I'm worried that what I've got previously isn't any good. So I've already thrown it out and I'm going to do it again. But I want to make that easier for everyone else. No talk would be complete without some Apple stuff. Um, this is about carefully considering your translatable strings. Um, most people don't. Bold at the bottom is talk to your translation team about ways to eliminate potential translation problems. I am your translation team this evening. I don't speak any languages other, other than English, but I'm going to make it easier. I'm going to mitigate that problem without having to, you know, tell you that in Korean that's not going to translate the way you've programmed it. This is the pain. Anyone who's worked with me or near me knows that I, I hate this. You run gen strings, you do what Apple says, and it fills your file full of these. No comment provided by engineer. I can't say enough how frustrating that is. It's like, what is that? What is next? Where does it sit? What's the context? Has it used more than once? If I translate that, where does it sit in the app? That's the problem. That's the problem, and that's me. <laughs> Transition, <laughs> There's a couple in here. So NS localized string is, is I'm not sure what this slide says, I just added it, but it, <laughs> that's what it is, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> now this was, this was a fun part of my talk, these are the abuses, and I ran, past, I ran this past Chris today and he's like, oh, no, but that, that's, that's defined behavior, that's okay, no, no, no. <laughs> this is, <laughs> This is the, I heard literal strings encode a bad localization method. That's what most of you do. There's no comment or it's nil. You were, someone worked out you could put nil in there and put nil in there. This is the, what the fuck is the comment parameter for? Yeah, who, who does that? Who does that? that? That's just paying lip service. Out of sight, out of mind. Sean told me that someone, he'd seen this or someone did it. This is defining a macro that removes the second parameter. <laughs> I've said, yeah. Entire book as a key localization method. This, this is how it doesn't scale. This is a perfect example how this method of just putting your English in the key doesn't work. Um, that does work. Keys can be that long. But we've got that. In, that's actually from the REA code base today. Um, so, and I showed this to Miles earlier, who is at REA with us. And he's like, yeah, yeah but, but we do that. That's true. I'm not saying I don't do this, I'm saying this is bad. This is, the key could be anything, but I know what it is, localization method. This is a common one as well, where you're pulling down something from, a, from the web, something that needs to be localized, and you put it in there. And now everyone's ignored those, method, those, those warnings from gen strings, if they've ever run it, saying it's not a literal string, you go, bugger that. And then everyone's got 
a mapping in the top of their strings file which they've manually put in because gen strings doesn't make it. That comes from that and that's bad. There's a second level which is localization gray areas. Duplicating keys, I've argued with Oliver about this already. If you had the same key twice, you get a warning when you run Apple's gen, gen strings. I'll get to gen strings later. It's a gray area because it's not all that bad. If you add comments like I've done here, you add context to your string, which is what was missing in the first example I gave, and you've got, that's where it's used, detail view controller or root view controller, that's the context. It's okay, it's a gray area. But I'm still calling it, as, it's in my abuses section. The second one is a bit better than that. People are trying. If you, if you actually do this, you, you're making an effort, but you're still a bit, you're a bit behind um, what I'm thinking today. Trivial example, four of something, three of something. You've got two strings which can be localized, but you're kind of concatenating them together. Common pattern when you're sort of just putting a button or a label, this and that. It's okay, but it doesn't scale. I mean, in that example, the odds are it'll, it'll scale, but quite often in other languages, different nouns and different verbs are in different spots and all that, so that's, that's a no-no. This is, yes, and, 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 and quite often you can't tell if you're English, you don't understand Korean or something, you can't tell if it's wrong. Um, this, is not, this, is, this is one step more convoluted. It, you've, you're trying a bit harder, you're localizing the format string. <laughs> Now, I mean, that makes sense um, if, you know, that gives you that flexibility. The problem with this method is it's just messy. You've got three localized strings. There's three different pieces. If you just run it like that, you end up with a strings file with just shit everywhere. And, like, what, what relates to what? No, no, no good. I will. I did. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Before I go into what I would call best practices, and by best practice I mean what I'm saying you should do, I want to look at dissecting NS localized string. Because most people don't know how it works, and up until looking into it in depthly, no one really cares. So I want to go into it, and this is the four, there's actually four macros. Has anyone used any, any of the, other, the other three besides the first one? A couple of, if you've, if, if you've tried to solve this problem. <laughs> if you've tried to solve the problem that I'm trying to solve for you, you've used them because it solves some of the problem. Um, they all back onto, and this is out of the nsbundle.h files, so they're just macros in nsbundle, so they, they'll talk to the localized string for key value table, and value is the default value that it would return if you don't have the string, like if you haven't localized it, if it's not in a strings file, which is why you get the key back normally, which is why people put English in the key, because there's no value there's no, like, de no default value in the normal localized string. And table is the, the strings file. And by default, you get localizable.strings. So that's where it comes from. So that's why everything's in localizable.strings when you use localized string for key. The other three, the, the bottom two, if you want to have a different bundle, um, the main two tonight I want to talk about is the top one and the, the second one, localized string from table. Now, underneath, as I just said, they call localized string for value table on your, on your bundle. That's pretty obvious. So if you call that yourself, you're just going behind the macro. Bundle localizations, it's a big part of Coco. Um, it's the same, it's been the same forever as far as I'm aware. Um, you localize your resources by duplicating them in the .lproj directories in your NS bundles. Um, and there is, a for, there is a standard for that. Um, you can't just put, I've run some unit tests on a little project I've put on GitHub. You can't just give it rubbish and it'll say you, that's this language. You, they, they, there is a standard from it, um, to it. Um, now, from, from the LProj directories that you've got, you could, I, I, Apple now kind of give you EN, English, for, for nothing when you start a new project. But as you add your own, you've got to do it manually. Or Xcode helps a little bit, but I'm not too concerned about Xcode. Um, you can ask the bundle what localizations it has. All these pieces are going to come together in a minute. But you can ask the bundle what localizations it has. And then you can tell there that I've got English and Korean in mine, in my, in my example. And note that the localizations it returns are strings. They're not locales. They're not instances of anything else. They're just strings. Um, and they map directly to those LProj directories if it seems to validate those LProj directories. The second level of NS localized string is that it it uses the current, you know, the, the language of the device, um, or language of your computer. So 
it correlates what's in your localizations in your bundle when you use NS localized string with the user, standard user defaults uh, app, Apple languages key. Um, and I'm guessing that that's derived, someone may be able to correct me, and I'm talking mainly about iOS, not Mac. Um, I'm guessing that's derived from uh, NS locale preferred localizations because that's derived from your system settings. And when you can reorder your languages in your, on your Mac or on your iOS device, that's where that comes from. Um, there's a lot of Stack Overflow questions about how do I force NS localized string to use the language I want it to use? Well, most people just hack that Apple languages string exit the app and, and come back into it, which is really good. But you can see that they're the same there, Apple languages and preferred languages. So you add those two things together. Well, you add those two things together and NS localized string ends up, well, localized, localized string for value, for key value table, adds those two things together. And if they're valid, if it finds a localization, it calls, basically, it finds the strings table that you're after by calling path for resource type directory for localization on itself. So if you've provided nothing, if you've provided no table, you, it ends up calling localizable of type strings, directory nil, because most of them are in the root directory, and for localization. And that basically just, the en localization is just prefixing the lproj directory on top of it. So you end up with a path to your, your strings file. And this is like, didn't all fit on one slide, but assuming this previous variable table path exists in this context, um, you grab an NS string, string with contents of file, uh, UTF-8. Uh, it may be different if you encode your strings files differently, but UTF-8. You then grab strings file property list form properly list from strings file format. That turns the strings file format into a dictionary, and then you've got value for key. So that's how it works. The very basic level, it's just loading that strings file using that one property <coughs> list from strings file format method under the hood, using the languages of the app versus the languages you've provided. There's some default jug juggling in there, but that's the gist of it. Now, this is, this is, why, this is why I'm here, with, that, with that, that being said, using NS localized string properly. <laughs> this is an example of my, of the perfect NS localized string. And I'll explain it piece by piece. I'm using NS localized string from table. I'm giving it a key that's a key, not English. The table is the second parameter, and that's giving it context of like, in particular, you've got a view based, view controller based app, that's a view controller, it can be any logical thing. And I'm giving it a description that adds to the context of the previous two things. That's perfect. That there, that's, that's the way it should be. And I'm going to go through them one by one now, even, even though I've just said it. Localized string from table. It ends up giving you once you use gen strings properly, multiple strings files, which immediately divides your localization effort up into multiple chunks instead of one big file full of just crap. You can arrange these files, you can organize these files by logical sections of your app. In my case, in my small little app that I'm using, it's basically like every screen. I've got stations and I do a train, train app, stations and routes and this and that. They're different sections, each screen basically and it implies a context to the keys and to the comments. The next part is using unique key-like keys. Remove the English, please. Just do it. Just have a key. You look at it and you can still read the key. It says this, you know, this dash of this. In this case, it says nav title. It doesn't say station detail, but it says nav title. Remove the language, put it in the comments, which I'll get to next. The reason I want you to use unique keys is for the flexibility it gives you at the end of the day. It may be trivial, but each English word in a context that you're using it may not be the same word in another language. It may be the same in the language you're using now, but if you're gonna go to multiple, multiple locales, it may not be the same. Now, different, different strings files immediately mitigates the conflict of keys because they're different for each string file. Because as I said, the strings file just turns into a dictionary. So there's different dictionaries. But 
if you just have a hard fast rule and more or less keep the keys unique into their context, it you don't have to think about it. You don't have to think. Just do it. Useful comments. Most people don't put comments because when they're writing them, they want to do the code, they don't want to do the strings. But as I said, they know strings are bad, so they put NS localized string around it. If you do a useful comment, and you may have to go back to your app and like provide the useful comments. You don't have to do it like the first time you write it. But it provides additional context, and that's three levels of context you've got. This is easy then. And it adds and then you add the preferred English slash development language in wording in the brackets. And that's my example here. So rather than using the even longer format of NS localized string, I just put the English in some sort of pseudo style in the middle there. That's like that's what it would be in English. It's readable. And then that ends up in my comments in my localized string. And that's there, there, sorry, I didn't have to go back there, my examples there. Um, so the first one is the technical, the technical context, table view section two header, um, and that's already in my strings file, so I know what page that's on. And then the other one is like what it would be in English. Um, two more bits on localizing stuff properly. When you're localizing format strings, which is one of my gray areas, which people don't do properly, I want you to localize each logical version of the string. Bear with me, there's some code here. Now, I've got a, I've got a little view in my app, right? Don't worry too much about reading it. It's the gist is, I've got a view in my app that shows the number of train stations and the number of transfer train stations on your calculated route. So you can have one station, you can have one transfer and one station. You can have two stations and two transfers. There's this whole, you know, grid which is here. So what I've done is instead of doing that like really munged up one that's gone like one <coughs> format string with all the other little strings sort of jammed into it, I've just gone and I've got I've added some cyclic complexity here, but at the end of the day I've got four distinct strings. No matter where I translate that to, if I give the translator enough context, I'll get four strings out of it. Okay, I'm not reusing the word stations, I'm not reusing the word transfers, you know, there's a little bit of double up here, but the context is right. And that, it's, I don't know, it's, it feels like that's flexible. There's a little bit more code there, but look, it's, it's not hard to read. Um, there's a few if statements, and that, so that's that one, localizing format strings. Final one, I, I came up with this solution uh, yesterday because I'm like, oh, I need a solution for this one. Localizing non-literal strings. Keep doing it because it's worth localizing them rather than just having your API keys arrive on the front. Um, grab it. Define in your app a particular strings file that they'll sit in. The comment in this case doesn't matter because gen strings can't help you. This is a manual process from here on in. But when you go and use gen strings, Tell it to ignore that table that you're adding stuff to. It won't give you errors. It won't jump over them. Well, it will jump over them, but it won't jump over them because of the error. It'll jump over them because you're telling it to jump over them. And then just deal with it manually. So if you're, uh, the assumption there is that you're putting that string on the screen, you know what they are. You know what the, the, the list of those strings will be. So you can deal with that yourself. Um, if I get into uh, third party apps in a minute, they can help you with that <coughs> further along the line. Um, once you've started using, once you've all gone home tonight and refactored your app to do what I said, you can start using gen strings properly. Now, most people hate gen strings. They're like, ah, it's crap, it doesn't do what I want, like it's sort of, it's old. It is. It crashed multiple times trying to do what I was demonstrating that it can do. But it crashed for my reason, not its reasons. But if you're using strings from table, it will create the different strings files for you. So it recognizes the different macros that you've t used, the, all the NS localized string macros, and it will create the files for you, which is, I didn't know it did that. It, it does, it's awesome. Okay. With gen strings, you can also output what it wants to output to a folder, which is really handy if you put it in your English folder. And you can skip table names, as I said, with skip table. Additional to that, um, It'll read localized string elements in comments, which is a pain in the ass, but it will. Um, so don't have comments everywhere. You can suppress the multiple key warnings if you insist on having multiple keys with Q. 
It will add the numbers into your format strings for you. So if you've got format strings, it'll just do that. Which means like that's the order of the arguments. So that's um, important if you want to swap them around. Um, and something that I was interested in is you can define your own macros. So for example, if you, I've, I've written a piece of software, the JC multi, JC localized string. Just tell it that. And they all have to have the, the right endpoints. They have to be named similar. But you can use other macros. So it'll keep working even if you want to just hack underneath, like I've done in some work. That's gen strings. And that's an example of using gen strings. Skip my API keys, put it into the English LProj directory, and I'm using my own macro. And I'm just run it on the M files. It's pretty good. It will overwrite the existing files, though. That's a pain. But localizing nib files um, has changed very recently, but this is how you used to have to do it. IB tool grabs them out, it's like gen strings, well, IB tool does heaps, but in this context it's like gen strings for your nib files, and then you change around your strings files, and then you kind of munge it back into the strings, into the storyboard or the, the nib file. Um, I don't know, Mac developers, if you've done it, a bit of a pain. Um, localizing nibs is getting easier. Um, it's actually in the release notes for Xcode 4.4. Well, I noticed it in 4.4.1 the other day, but 10.8, iOS 6, Xcode 4.4, you can actually create, use this base in internationalization method, which means you can have a nib file, one nib file, and a strings file named the same, and it will use that. So you don't need multiple nib files, you just need a strings file. Which I thought that was interesting because I came up with my idea first, of having multiple strings files, and now Apple, you know, Apple did it first, but now Apple's saying have multiple strings files for your different UI, your different screens. So I feel like I'm kind of on par here. I feel like I'm doing what Apple would do, is doing. Um, so yeah, some justifications. I feel like it's adhering, like using my strings and splitting up the strings files, everything I've said, is, is like, it's not going outside of what NS localized string is designed to do. Um, it, Gen strings is happy with it, and even the gray areas, I call them gray areas because you can actually suppress the warnings in Gen strings, so it's gray area, you can suppress them, but it gives you the warnings by default, so it's bad. Um, it's completely flexible, so if you follow my ideas, you don't have to think about the, the language. It's a little bit more verbose. You have to have the four different strings for the two different arguments. Um, but you can also pick and choose these ideas too. They're not, you can, you can actually just pick one of them and it makes it better than just having the crap I showed to start with. Ongoing localization. These are screenshots I found today. Well, not screenshots, but like previews of, of how I localized my app in uh, November 2009. I took screenshots of every screen and I highlighted the unique strings. So I didn't even bother doing the distinct ones. I highlighted the unique strings. I made a Word document because most people can open Word documents. And I sent it to a, a Korean friend and I said, just write the Korean next to it. And that's, that's what I did. And then I pasted that into the strings files. It doesn't scale. Um, two and a half years later, I'm like, oh, I don't think I can use any of that anymore. But for historical reasons, that's interesting. The app still looks that bad, though. Um, I'm not a UI guy. Um, this didn't fit anywhere else, but it's a handy thing. You can set NS show non-localized strings in your app, and it will turn them all, the, the, the strings it hasn't found in your localized files, turn them into like caps, and they, they stand out really well. So that's handy to debug. Um, and you can grab, you can see if it's set or not, because it ends up in standard user defaults, uh, show non-localized strings. So this is, this is ongoing, this is in the ongoing localization section. So I've, the assumption is that I've, I've built my app, I've had it sort of localized because it was easy to do the first pass, and now I'm kind of editing my app going forward. Um, I can see that I've added some, they're not localized. This app, um, Linguin, I found a while back. It's up there on the developer tools, it's not too bad. Um, it'll sit there and read your Xcode project and kind of keep track I found out you have to like have done it first. It doesn't like start from scratch. You have to have done it first. You open it up and it'll show you in the columns just here, you've got English and Korean. It'll show you what's not localized, which is really handy when you're, when you're tooling around. And it will actually modify the files for you. From what I understand, the guy that does it, the Coconetics guy, he's written his own little gen strings kind of thing that, that trolls, your, trolls your app. But it basically is a GUI around gen strings. 
Um, hold on, you didn't see that, Oliver. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's like a couple of bucks. Like it's it's totally worth it. I'm using it now to make well. I'm using it now to make sure everything's right. Um, and it listens to the difference. It listens to all the bits that I had before. Now on this topic with Nick the other week, um, Oliver chimed in. App code actually does everything that Xcode is shit at, and it'll sit there and in your NS localized string macros, it'll be like, oh, this isn't in this localization, or you can edit them in line. You can actually edit the strings files from well, from App code, and it'll keep them up to date for you, which solves your ongoing localization issues like flat, like straight away it solves them. Uh, 1.6 is the link there. Uh, you can refactor all your localized. Yeah. That's a screenshot from the current version I downloaded, but coming up like really soon, it, it's every problem I just mentioned. It more or less makes easier, which is which is really cool. But you have to use app code. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, it's it's one of the good because I'm so frustrated and passionate about this particular thing. It's actually the fact that they're listening to that problem and they make calling that a first class, first class like refactor object of, their, of theirs. That's a good reason to use it, honestly. Um, even if just for that, if you work out how to open it and go to that and do that. <laughs> the other way to continue your localizations is manually. And you can continue, if you run gen strings properly and don't have your, you know, your strings that you manually put in the top like we do at REA because they come from the API, if you don't have that and your file is generated from gen strings and you just change the localizations, if you run gen strings again, it'll overwrite them all but you can just run a diff on that and you can see the new keys and you can just pick the, the, the ones that you want. So, I mean, most people are pretty cluey with, with running, you know, merges and stuff, um, picking different lines from their git commit. So that's not actually a bad way of doing it. Um, it's just a bit more manual. Um, and I always worry about those, that you're going to miss things or that. But um, Next thing is localization services. Um, my best win has been with international friends. But they're also really nice and they just kind of like do it for nothing and they may just sort of just do it and go, that's enough, you know, that's fine. Um, from the One More Thing conference, the guys from Tapper Talk um, mentioned crowdin.net. Basically, you upload, your, you upload your strings files to them. I hope I've got the tab open. Hold on, one of these. You upload your strings files to them and people just, if they want to, go in and just fix the strings. It doesn't have a lot of context to it, but they go in and fix the strings. And it's totally community driven. So like, that's totally, that's really cool. Um, I'm, it's as accurate as crowdsourcing can be, I guess. I mean, there seems to be some sort of like voting process on there. I'm going to put my stuff up there um, once I finally finish it. Anyone who knows me knows I'll never finish it. Um, but yeah, that, that's. That's cool. The other one is um, AppLingua, which you can pay them, so I assume that might be a bit more accurate. Um, they pay, th th that's the thing, like the, my method of like, oh, just localize, you know, all the options. Um, it costs you more money going via AppLingua, so your mileage may vary. I've actually got some cost data on getting, getting like a, 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 the work I'm doing at the moment, and translated. Yep. So basically, I can say to a Tor operator, Translate rate is going to be this much per number of words. Is it a lot per word? Uh, it, it, was quite, it was quite a reasonable per tool. So it was about 120 bucks per week. Okay. For, yeah. for an average number of words. Yeah. So if, you, if you've got an app that can extend because you can translate it, that's great. Um, yeah, awesome. Uh, extended topics that I haven't talked about. Each one of these points is its own topic. Auto layout basically mitigates your localizations that go left to or left to right right to left rather than left to right, um, or up, you know, vertical, uh, handles all that, well, helps to handle that. Then all I've talked about is literally localizing the strings. If you want to get into having your locales, your dates, your numbers, your dates and numbers and like sort of various bits and pieces, you need to use those elements. Don't just go in there and put things like numbers in and get someone to translate them. Well, Apple have done it all. They've done it all for you. But again, it's a bit, a bit more, a bit harder work. Um, further reading, this is all on the slides, I've got notes on GitHub. Um, Internationalization Tips and Tricks by Dave DeLong on, at Apple WWDC this year was really cool. He spoke briefly about what I've talked about, but more about the local, like the 
date localization. I've got a little demo to show that, uh, that it is working, prove that I've fiddled with it. Um, um, I made my own localized strings. So I same, similar thing, they all they all back onto well they back onto a singleton that I wrote because it does a bit more than just NS bundle. But basically I've got a localized string for key and internal methods look similar to NS bundle. And what it allows you to do, if I run this successfully, I've got a little app. Oh hold on, I should show you the view controller code just to so if you look at the view controller. Uh, I've got a, a label, I've got some labels, and I've got a hello world in my view controller strings file just there on line 46 in the middle. Um, and if you look at this, my hello world is just there in the middle. It's showing the active localization, which is EN English, and then the one down the bottom is non-localized. I'm using that, that runtime thing that's not localized. And that's what it does. So I built on top of NS Bundle the ability to grab the localizations out and then display them in a little settings window. So you go into settings and you can see that my bundle, the particular, it's not main bundle, it's a sort of particular bundle I've set, has three elements. Now with NS localized string you can't just, well unless you hack it like some of the Stack Overflow people do, you can't just change the language underneath the hood because it's bound to your system language very early in the app startup lifecycle. So from here I'm like okay well that's what I want, that's my why I'm doing this. I can change it to Spanish and I actually they're just Google translated like but anyway the point is that the localized string from table is calling now different strings files and what's actually interesting is that's Korean um, what's actually interesting is if you look at the settings view controller this is good for RMIT students, it's very basic stuff um, it's grabbing it's grabbing the localizations out of the bundle, which this is locale stuff, but I thought this was really interesting. It creates a locale with that localization string, because they've all been strings up to this point here, and it sets the text as the display name for this local identifier localization. So I can grab a locale, I can grab the locale for Korea and display it in Korean. And that actually, these strings that are in here are just, they're from the system. So there's not actually, there's, that's just a table view data source delegate here. So then yeah, and then I set, uh, I've got a singleton that sets the active location, and then when I set the active location, the view control, I mean it's a bit hacky, but the view controller just listens to a notification and just dumps its view, and next time it loads it's there. So even though I'm using the same paradigms that Apple want you to use, I've got a lot more flexibility, and that's all from just working out how localized string works, which is what I've put in this presentation. I'm going to put this, this JC localized string up on GitHub um, as soon as I fix the errors I've put in this by trying to come up with contrived examples. Um, but yeah, that's localized strings. I have a question for you, Jesse. Um, one of the macros, the, the, the longest of the macros uh, in its localized string, um, lets you specify what it calls. In its localized string, String cookie value table blah blah default value. With default value, yes. Yeah, so that's my version, but it's the same. Yeah, you 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 were putting the the uh, default value essentially in your little brackets in your um, in your comment. Why not just use the default value one? To you would at least like my problem with using keys that are non-English is that is that non-localized problem is that you get the key in that point in your app. Right. And that's a bug. Um, not that an English key in a French localized app is not a bug, but it's less of a bug. You know, you, the user's probably going to understand, well, may understand English, more likely they're going to understand programmeries, uh, which is the key name, yep. which will be the default value if yep. you don't have a localized string. Yep. One, one option, I, the reason, the reason I've put the value in the brackets there is literally because string from table is shorter than the other one and the other, and, but hold on, the other one also you've got to pass in a bundle. Now you could also easily make your own macro that hides the bundle and hides some other stuff but then it doesn't fit this paradigm that gen strings likes. Does gen strings, no you can split, oh okay, well, right, does it, gen strings obviously is looking for macro name and then the parameters that you're giving it are kind of 
what it's really looking for? It's looking for that, then it's looking for that plus the, from table, then it's looking from table in bundle. So it's, it's really dumb. Like it's literally like I had, I had JC, I ran it on this and I set it to JC localized string and it was trying to localize the JC localized string dot H comment in the header file. <laughs> That's why I was crashing. So it's literally looking for that. I believe this, someone wrote a better gen string. That was the, the Coconetics guy that did Linguin um, has, has tried that. Um, it's on GitHub. But yeah. But then one of the things that Nick said um, in discussions, he's like, we, Nick even mentioned, oh, we could use plists, like you could manage this a lot easier. But then if you start using different things, you end up being bound to that other technology rather than Apple stack. But if you built something that ended up creating localized strings for strings files for you, that'd be better. There's a million ways you could do it, but mine's the right way tonight. <laughs> <laughs> other questions? Uh, so when you say you, if you have a normal string, so if you get from an API, you put that at the top of the file. What do you mean exactly? Like that? Okay, so when you run <laughs> Miles knows about this. When you run gen strings on your on your apps, it creates these big localized fi the strings files. It skips over non-literal strings, so it just doesn't put them in there. So if you want them in there, you just have to manually type them in. And you always put them at the top so you know where they are. So my question is, why don't you pass the, lo uh, the locale to the API? If you solve the problem on the API side, yes. you're winning more than, because yeah. Because I guess um, if you want to push uh, you know, some over the air, like, um, essentially you're coupling the uh, localized strings to the API, which may change. Of course, change. yes, so of I course. You're better, totally better to do the localization at the API side. So, I mean, with okay. REST, you can just use the, you know, the language um, header to find out what language you want. If you, if you did it like that, you remove that problem, yeah. and awesome. I mean, well, I thought, um, that was a reason. That, that my, my method assumes your API is agnostic. It's just returning things that need, need more work. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do a third or fourth slide. You said uh, using the hash divide to shorten your code uh, was a bad thing. Yeah. Um, that example you showed at the end, you're using that. How does the, uh, when you submit to the Mac App Store, uh, to the desktop App Store, how does it, um, how well does it like uh, variations on this device? As far as I'm aware, it shouldn't be a problem because the macros get compiled down to they get, like, they literally just get ripped out, and you end up with NS bundle value key whatever. Um, in my case, I've got something in between, but it's, it's not. It, the beauty of it is, it's not using anything that you can't just grab from the bundle. Like, it's just, it's stock standard. <laughs>